630, I'm calling the regular meeting of the Comfort Lake Forest Lake Watershed District Board to order. And the first item on our agenda is an oath of office for our new member, Jen Oaknick. And um, is that correct? Yes. Pronunciation? Thank you. Yep. And our attorney, Mr. Chuck Holtman, will deliver the oath of office. Okay. <laughs> I, Jen Oaknick, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the constitutions of the United States and the state of Minnesota. That I, <laughs> was a little long, I'm sorry. That I will support the constitutions of the United States and Minnesota. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of manager. The duties of the office of manager. Of the Comfort Lake Forest Lake Watershed District. Of the Comfort Lake Forest Lake Watershed District. To the best of my judgment and abilities. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations yeah. and welcome. Welcome, Jen. Great. Next item, the setting of the meeting agenda. And I just have one uh, change that I would like to offer, uh, and that is moving the minutes from September 27th uh, to 11A after reports of officers and managers. Okay. I don't know. Issues that I'd like to nine. comments and, and recommended changes. Okay. So I don't want to take up the first part of the meeting with that. Okay, so. Okay. Yes. Uh, Madam President, managers, um, I meant to send out today a uh, request that we had from the Minnesota Stormwater Council for a donation to be used as a matching fund towards um, um, the research that they do or that's done through the University of Minnesota. Under new business? It would be new business, so we could have it as C? a 7C, yes. And we have uh, a memo and a couple other items that we'll pull up for you. Okay, so. thank you. All right, I'll make a motion. I also have a suggestion that I'd like to, I had a chance to meet with our um, lady that's been working with on looking at properties for lease, and I've got some information that would be, I think, pertinent, so I can maybe just give a brief summary of the best opportunities, and maybe we can set something up for offline for the next meeting, to get ready for the next meeting. Okay, let's do that under old business, AD. Okay. Update on lease. lease. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with the Changes recommended. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is the consent agenda with uh, September 13th and 18th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from September 13th and 18th. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public open forum. Either of you want to address the board? No? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Citizens Advisory Committee update. Madam President and board members, uh, the CAC CAC met here the first week in October um, as we meet monthly. And I think you have the update of that meeting in your board package. I guess the one thing that I would like to highlight, I guess, is, um, and uh, I think it was discussed to try to get it on one of the next future board, board meeting agendas or through a subcommittee, and that is to try to continue working on the Watershed Championship, Champion Award program that was talked about and discussed last spring. And there was a subcommittee that started to work on it, and then through some departures, it kind of has, has, has been tabled. But um, you know, if you recall, there was a timetable in that program where we were going to try to finalize it yet by the end of this year so that we could roll it out the first part of, the, of 2019 with awards in the spring of 2019. So, I would just ask that you consider that here for one of your next uh, board meetings is to discuss 
and pick up, I guess, where it kind of got dropped because it's out of our, it's out of CAC's hand rates now. It's with, back with the board right now. So other than that, um, we also are discussing our 2019 initiatives and the projects we want to undertake. So we'll be discussing that here in another two weeks and hopefully finalize that. So we have a, a list of action items we're going to do in 2019 also here. So other than that, any questions? Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, next is new business. First is the permitting update. <clears throat> My present manager, uh, Aaron Edison, is going to provide the update, um, mostly to uh, illustrate some of the changes uh, that have occurred or are ongoing, I guess. And I know that we've had this in, um, in the administrator's report, but this is a little more um, in depth and gives a better vision of what um, we're really in, involved with at this point. So thank you, Erin. Yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the permitting program, what, what's changed about it, what it is, and how it's changed from um, what it used to be. So uh, why are we talking about this right now? Um, since the permitting program has changed drastically very recently, um, I just wanted to give a summary of what the program involves and how and why it has changed. Um, as you can see from the graph in front of you, the permitting activity has increased at a pretty rapid pace. Um, not only does that mean that there are more applications coming in, but applications are coming in faster than permits are being closed out. So um, as of today, there are 60 active permits um, since we have multiple permits open from previous years. Um, and also, you know, 2018 is not, not over yet. Um, and there's still more now from this year than there have been in previous years. Um, so I just wanna take a minute to talk about the staff um, that work on the permitting program. I am the permitting coordinator. Um, and I have a bachelor's degree in ecology and field biology. Uh, with a natural resources emphasis. Um, before I started working here, um, I originally, in, when I was in college, um, I interned for the city of St. Cloud and um, I worked for their stormwater utility department. Um, so I did a lot of erosion and sediment control inspections there and inspected and maintained um, the city's stormwater features. Um, and I've also worked as the watershed coordinator for the Heron Lake Watershed District and the um, environmental project technician for the Sock River Watershed District, where I did a whole host of um, different things, including the permitting um, and ditch program, um, monitoring, education, all that kind of stuff. Um, I know we've met before, but I just wanted to mm -hmm. go a little more in depth with my background because I don't think I really talked about it all that much um, when we first met, so. Um, and then also the permitting program has two technicians. Um, Aiden Reed, he has been working um, for us for a little while now. He started in April, I think. Um, and he has a bachelor's degree in political science from Hamlin. Um, he started out at the Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy. Um, and then he sort of switched gears and um, went to the DNR for a little while and Prairie Restorations. Um, and then our newest addition to the team is Rachel Funky, and she has a bachelor's degree in ecosystem science and sustainability from Colorado State. Um, she worked for a consulting firm uh, where she did a lot of wetland delineation and um, rare plant surveys. And then um, she worked for Dakota County doing natural resources management. Um, so she did a lot of evaluating restoration projects and um, water quality monitoring and things like that for Dakota County. So all the permitting staff go through the construction installer course through the University of Minnesota Erosion and Stormwater Management Certification Program. <laughs> um, and in addition to that, I've also taken the design of construction SWIP class. 
So that's where our sort of permitting related uh, training is at. Um, so this is just a brief rundown of the elements of the permitting program and who is responsible for those elements within the program staff. Um, so there's rule determination, application assistance, reviewing materials and, issue, and issuing the permits, site inspections, um, rule enforcement, and then there's all the stuff involved with the maintenance declarations, um, and then just sort of following up on reports from residents or concerns, um, so just things like that. Um, so I've briefly sort of summarized the steps involved in the administrative process. Um, it's kind of tricky because the process changes based on what rules apply. So obviously if the project needs to be approved by the board, um, that process is different um, than if we can issue it administratively and that sort of thing. But generally um, it starts with meetings or talking with the applicant in a pre-application setting. Um, and then there's rule determination and working with the applicants um, to make sure they get all their necessary materials submitted. Um, I will review, if it's a small project, review all of the materials, write the memo, and send that to the district engineer for review. Large projects, I'll review non-engineering related things. Um, and then depositing checks and tracking all the financials, communicating the permit status with formal notices or verbal communication, emails, phone calls, that sort of thing. Um, and then reviewing, approving submittals that are required by conditional uh, a board approval if that's applicable, drafting all the permit documents for administrator approval and getting the applicant signatures. Um, and then there's, after the permit is issued, um, answering lots of questions, solving problems. A lot of my job is reacting to the things that are coming at me from uh, the outside, from either people that have permits, people that are asking about permits if they need one, or problems that are going on with permits. So that's something that takes up a lot of time. Um, and then overseeing the erosion sediment control inspections that the technicians do um, and pursuing enforcement of non-compliant items um, that they find during those inspections. And then for closeout, verifying el eligibility for closeout, um, making sure everything, all the stipulations are met, um, and then getting all the financial stuff with deposit, returning remaining deposit and financial assurance, um, and then also annual review of the uh, reporting materials for those maintenance declarations. So as you can see, that's quite a large list of things um, that's involved with the administrative process. And of course, that's not even counting all of the things that EOR does for us for that permitting process. Um, so a little bit about the changes. Um, we've sort of identified uh, internal factors and external factors. Um, so the internal factors that we've identified are policy changes, administrative process changes, inspection frequency, communication with municipalities, meeting attendance, and technology. So I'll just kind of go through those. Um, so a large factor in the increased permitting activity is due to the recent rule revisions, um, due to a lower threshold to trigger the erosion control rule. Um, most single family homes that are within the district boundary now are being permitted. Um, so that adds a pretty large number of permits. Um, and then that Rule revision also required a rework of all the informational materials um, that we had regarding the permitting and rules. Um, and so along with this, we also redid the permitting page on the website and created some more new materials to improve communication with applicants, which 
can often save staff time. Um, and then another policy change uh, is that we've begun to implement the, the permit transfer policy, um, which there was no previous process for. So erosion control permits are being transferred from large overall residential development permits to their individual building lots. And each transfer is about as time consuming as new, a new application, um, but it improves the paper trail and um, increases builder accountability. So that's helpful. Um, for administrative process changes, uh, since starting my position, I've made several changes to the administrative process. Um, just in like depositing fee checks, we do that more frequently now just to make sure that we deposit them all within a week of receiving them. Um, I've also made sure to get uh, permittee signatures on all permits after issuance. Um, this was not always done in the past and now permits are not treated as active at all unless they've been signed um, by both parties. Um, so I've sort of distinguished between approved versus active. Um, and I think that's helped in getting those responses from permittees. Um, I've also taken on more of the uh, review responsibilities um, and in improved communication with those that need to do annual reporting for their maintenance declarations. Um, we've gotten more submittals than we have in the past uh, because I've been on top of that. Um, so there have also been some changes to the technology that I use during this administrative process and I'll talk about that um, in a different slide. Um, as you can see from this graph, the inspection frequency has gone up quite a bit. Um, as this is as of today, uh, our inspections this year have been 457 inspections. Um, and again, 2018's not even over yet, so we'll continue um, to, to inspect the active sites regularly. So communication with municipalities, I've been working to foster good working relationships with the municipalities within the district. So this has provided us with more enforcement options and has allowed the district to weigh in on some projects that are going to planning commissions and things like that. Um, it's also resulted in the district receiving applications for permits that may have been missed previously. Um, and it's also resulted in more people contacting me with permit or erosion control related questions, whether they need a permit or not. Um, so that's really good, I think. Um, this is just a brief list of the kinds of meetings that I attend, um, pre-construction pre meetings for projects. Um, we do pre-application meetings with people. Um, some of the larger scale projects we'll do, we'll, I'll go to the weekly construction meetings for. Um, then I do, I have a meeting with the Forest Lake engineering staff um, monthly. And then I've done some, with, some meetings with the WACA, TEP, and boundary reviews and things like that. Um, so attending, being able to attend all these meetings has allowed me as the coordinator of the program to stay fully aware of what is happening on sites, um, what applications might be coming up, and sometimes stay ahead of challenges in the permitting process before they happen. Um, so that's been really helpful. So now to the technology stuff that I mentioned. Um, this, I know this database has been pre briefly mentioned in previous updates, um, but I just wanted to talk about it a little bit more. So this is a Microsoft Access database that I have created that replaces several items that we were using for tracking the permitting process. 
Um, we had a spreadsheet for site inspections, one for financial and general tracking that became exceedingly cumbersome <laughs> to use once we began tracking more and more permits. Um, and we had a spreadsheet for tracking maintenance declarations and annual reports, and then the individual permit files within our shared drive. Um, so now we don't need to go searching through every single file to find information. It's just all in one place. Um, it's increased efficiency by um, automatically generating uh, some forms and letters that I use frequently. I can just push a button and then it comes up. It's pretty cool. Um, and it automatically tra uh, tracks metrics for reporting purposes. Um, it also allows staff to add notes of significant things um, for a project that may not be like in a document that you would find in the folder. So just a, a note on things so that we all kind of are on the same page and know what's happening with projects. Um, and since Access comes with our Microsoft Office subscriptions, it should be noted that the creation of this database cost nothing um, besides my time to build it. So um, that's also pretty sweet. Um, and then also for GIS, we received a conservation grant in order to purchase GIS license, licenses. Um, and this allows for easier application review and then also spatial inventories of permit sites, um, stormwater features and uh, buffers, things like that. Um, so for the sort of external factors that I talked about, um, things that cause changes in the, in the permitting program is that there's really just a lot more development in this area. Um, the Met Council has projected between 45 and 90 percent growth in um, a lot of the metro area. Um, and we've also found uh, increased noncompliance in inspections, but this is partially due to the increase in development. Um, and if we have more inspections and we do more, if we have more permits and we do more inspections, then there's sort of more opportunity for there to be noncompliance. Um, but another huge factor in noncompliance is the weather. Um, with an increase in the large storm events, I think permittees are having a lot more trouble maintaining their erosion sediment control measures um, than they have been in previous years. So that's something to note. So you all have this in your board packet, but this is the um, new permit program update that I am, am proposing. So because of the increased amount of permitting activity um, and manager requests for more useful permit-related information, um, I'm proposing to switch to a monthly update that looks more like this um, for the future instead of sort of that narrative that I was previously um, writing in the administrator's report. So this will help me save a lot of time because I can automatically pull a lot of this information from the access database and put it into a format like this. Does anyone have any questions for me? Well, just some comments. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice job, first Thank of all. You. Um, you've added a lot to this area. And just in time, it seems, that's quite an increase in permits. Um, I want to make sure that these, these presentation slides are going to be on the website. Okay, so that we can access them. Good. Yep. Um, monthly meetings with Forest Lake. Uh, you didn't mention Wyoming and Scandia. What's the frequency of that contact? Um, I, I have frequent contact with, uh, with those cities, but we don't have, like, solid meetings that are scheduled because I think there's just less of a less of a staff there. So mm -hmm. with Forest Lake, there's a lot of staff that sort of all come together on a regular um, basis. On a regular mm -hmm. basis, yeah. And then um, on your map with the yellow dots, yes, active and under review as of ten nineteen. Mm -hmm. um, now 
Uh, this represents all of the data on the charts, is that correct? Or on this uh, spreadsheet? Yes. Okay. And since those represent different things like residential, commercial, and shoreline mm -hmm. activities, uh, can you use different colors for those three? Yes. That would be very helpful. I can do that. And this is, in my opinion, excellent. This is what I was looking for. Um, it's very important to stay on top of this land use. And, and as I mentioned before, our 10-year uh, plans, every 10 years we have to redo this. And land use changes are very, very critical in determining what to do in the next decade period. Um, I especially like this uh, on page two, uh, the summary uh, by these different areas. I think that's very helpful. And putting into context the non-compliant items that it seems you know outrageously big, but uh, you've got it uh, as a ratio or percentage, and that helps. Um, but it also helps, I think, also for budgeting. And as we get into this new period now of um, growth again after a decade, after the recession of nothing, um, it's going to help in, in uh, budgeting for staff for this critical area. And then my final comment is um, I, I never try to miss the opportunity to talk about how absolutely important our rules and maintaining uh, best management practices uh, are for the success of what we're trying to do. Um, all of the projects get all of the attention. Um, that's correcting what happened in the past. But BMPs are preventing things from happening. And so they have an equal standing in my mind, and, and they really don't get the attention that they deserve. But um, keep up the good work. Important? Yeah. I guess in uh, Mike's memo here, he's suggesting maybe an improved efficiency of only bringing um, permits that require a variance to our attention that would help improve the efficiency of our meetings. And I guess I would encourage us to consider adopting that, that policy. Yeah. Madam President Matters, I was, I was annoying that's what many uh, Creek is doing currently and just something that the board may consider of all the things that come in. Um, you know, maybe there's a scale issue. We talked about industrial and larger right. projects versus some of the other. There are smaller stormwater projects related to even single family homes sometimes that get triggered or buffer, things like that, that still then, per our current policy, would require board action. Um, and that's, you know, just strictly up to the board. Um, you know, a couple other things to note is that um, when Aaron and I attended that meeting at Raleigh Purgatory um, here, of, a couple months ago or something. A um, couple things that I was struck by was, one is that, I, I, at least it was my impression that we were the only ones getting the annual reports um, regarding uh, any agreements that we have with entities that everybody else was, they were just not, of those in, in attendance, I don't know about all the districts uh, in the metro, uh, but those in attendance uh, said that they don't even, they don't even ask for them, they don't, you know, let alone, um, <laughs> Um, you know, track them down. So wow. whether municipal or, or private. So I thought that was uh, interesting in terms of the level of activity that the district is able to um, yeah. uh, to handle. Um, but it's one that that we've done in just more recent years ourselves. Um, and then again, also, I think we've noted before, but I think it's still important that um, items like the Chestnut Creek development. Um, so while it's only one permit dot on the map. It encompasses a lot of our right. staff time. Uh, it's, I mean, both Aaron and Aiden are out there both doing inspections <clears throat> and a lot of follow-up and, and meeting with individuals and communicating specific things. Um, so uh, there, are, there are those pieces as well. Well, maybe that can be footnoted. So that's inclusive of this report on page two? <clears throat> it is, and she does have it as a note. Um, well, but I, I think it's just so particularly important that I just yeah. wanted to bring it. So there's 15 sites under construction there? And that's part of the report from Forest Lake Management District? Right, but it's just listed as one permit. Yeah. <clears throat> but just because it's one permit for, for the development. No, I guess I'm asking yeah. here under total current sites, mm -hmm. the 19 inclu is inclusive of those 15? It's that one. No, it's just one. It's just one, one of those of 19. 19. Okay. When there's that many active houses. Huh. Yeah. Well... Okay. Well, then technically there's 34 individual sites, but yeah, wow. Right. 
Wow. Yeah, maybe there's a better way to represent that. Yeah, we've thought about that as well. Um, and then, but this tra permitting transfer for on some of them that Aaron also highlighted is another factor that gets thrown in there. Um, but we'll keep working on it as, mm -hmm. as we have, and Aaron's yeah. been doing a Maybe lot of Maybe just work. representing uh, current developments as a, just a se separate line with how many that total represents, and then the active ones would be this schedule that you're showing us, mm -hmm. and that would be separate. That would, might be helpful. I think also we're, at least I am interested in, and I think um, I, I think I speak for Aaron on this as well, um, with respect to the CAP region, Watershed District, their online program, um, I thought it was pretty nice. It's kind of, it's another GIS layer of, of application process, but it's more involved. There is a subscription with a private entity that's built it, um, but I think it's one that, and maybe we can um, bring something in a couple months or something that would yeah. Give you an idea as to what it would entail, but I think um, given the trajectory that we are at on, on currently with permitting um, and the number of acres and outbuilding that will continue in the district for you know next few de decades probably, um, it's probably something that we would want to uh, look at acquiring and implementing for the district. Well, given all the improvements that you've made in the process in, in terms of the, making it more efficient not only for us but also for our customers, uh, our clients, why don't we, I think we should try to do something with this variance issue so maybe we can, if we only look at things that, have, that require a variance, that allows them to move faster with getting the permits out to the, to the people that are waiting to start your construction projects, correct, Aaron? Yeah. I think that would be a big benefit to our clients and I think it would also improve our, the efficiency of our meetings too if we didn't have to go through all those. So I guess, do we have to make a motion on that or do we want to discuss I it? I think somewhere? that I would, be, I would at this point prefer to talk it over with staff uh, and the engineer and give a recommendation as to okay. which potential ones that might be considered or which options. Give the board several options and make a recommendation. So this will be a follow-up action then for the meeting? Sure. So we don't lose it? Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't realize that that was a problem, actually. I mean, you list those things in your admin report and we only discuss the ones that you bring to our attention with potential problems. So I, I didn't realize that that was really a problem. But um, if it is, then you will come back to us with um, how to solve it, I guess. There was one more uh, comment uh, that I missed, Aaron. I apologize. But on sure. the first page with the listing, I, I don't see the lake management district that each of those oh. are attached to. So if you could yep. add that, it's very helpful. But thank you. This is uh, excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Next is the AIS update. Your present managers, we have Emily Hines here to do the AIS update. Okay, sure, thank you. All the um, way from Utah, thank you. Yes, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Um, Madam President, managers, not much of a, an update this month. Um, just a few bullet points in your board packet about just kind of the latest updates with what's going on. Um, I think by the December meeting, we'll have some more info from Blue Water Science and then really be able to compile a, a 2018 year-end summary, and then we'll have all the watercraft inspection survey data back. And so I think at the December meeting, we'll have a more comprehensive year-end summary. I thought it was interesting under Shields Lake, the price is higher, of course, because of the impact of the tariffs. Um, so are we to expect something like that to happen on uh, our other projects as well? Timing-wise, right now, we would not anticipate the Shields Lake project. We've issued the notice to proceed, um, and they have equipment on site uh, installing erosion control pieces. So there's um, most everything there, the product, piping, everything. Um, well, you know, it's been acquired, and they have it. So it's and a lot of it's made here in the U.S., so we would not expect some of those uh, pieces. They don't fall within the category. We're not really looking at much steel or other things that are, uh, or wood or other things that are, uh, subject to tariffs uh, presently. Um, for this particular one, we're going to um, reissue the, uh, the quotes and have a, we'll issue a construction period I've recommended to July 1 versus a whole year, just in the event that we run into something similar. Uh, after that, then we'll, we'll press council to see if we have a different option available to us versus re-quoting everything. Um, but 
presently, um, we will see a, an increase on that particular project um, of some percentage, whatever that might be, but I'm uh, still hoping to get it in place um, as we are looking to try to, you know, the electric fish barrier is still operational. We're just not monitoring it uh, on a you know, daily basis. Um, we'll get the, the CARP data back from um, the contractor, um, but we're still trying to line up a uh, rough fish harvest for this winter um, in advance of doing some other work out there, including um, some curly leaf pondweed treatment in the following year. Do our contracts allow a, a change in the contract because of uh, raw material price changes? I thought a contract was bid at a, at a firm fixed price. Well, this was a case where they, <clears throat> they, we had not gotten to the point where they had not they had not signed the contract, so right. they were. Um, okay. So we had quoted it, and then by the time we got it over there to them, and they held on to it for a while, and then they saw it coming. Yeah, yeah. So and then they, okay. they, I think they. Yeah. So, Thank you. They could have pulled out too, right. and then we would have had to go through rebidding. I'm right. Sure. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it on the AIS update, Mike? Yep, I think Done? so. Okay. I don't think there's anything else. All right, uh, and then the next one is the uh, new C Minnesota Stormwater Council. Yes, uh, Madam President, managers. So um, we had received this request uh, Friday afternoon, and. Board packers are going out, so I, I just wanted to make sure that um, staff and I had a chance to look at it. And uh, so Emily contacted uh, John Bellotta from University of Minnesota and to try to get some more specific information. Um, but overall, so they pool this money and then they use it for uh, various research. And these are the principal areas that they're um, looking to do, and this is typically done um, of work at or through the University of Minnesota. And so there's those three principal areas that they're looking to focus on. And <clears throat> they have received some um, clean water fund grants to do that research. But of course, then they still need to come up with a match. Um, so um, I, I did ask Emily, and she contacted, when she talked to John to make sure that, to see if we could um, try to be a host site, but there's no guarantees, but if, if we're a contributor, we can always make ourselves available um, for a research site if, if that was so inclined. Um, these all are, in fact, items of interest to the district. Um, and so um, we presently have $5,000 as a line item for a 2019 uh, uh, budget. Of course, we're still in 2018, but uh, under the research line item, <clears throat> as a metric, but also we could just bring it out of reserves. And we think uh, similar to some of the other contributions that have been made for other past programs, anything from 1000 to 2500 to $5,000 would be appropriate um, if the board was to choose to make a donation. Would this be under research or interagency? Uh, or both? <laughs> It, it could be both, but we're suggesting it's under research because that's the intended purpose of the, the dollars for go to research. So it sounds like this is a new um, consideration? Correct, okay. right, that this is a new request. And they have received um, funds from other organizations in the past, typically, um, mm -hmm. I think sufficiently to, you know, some of the larger Metro WDs and other organizations have contributed quite substantially, I think, Cap Region or some of them, and uh, um, uh, uh, one of the other ones, uh, I think your former one, in fact, uh, was... I'm a uh, fan of research. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> you know, 50 to 100,000, but, um, so, but apparently they're short of their goal this year, and that's why they've sent it out. Do we have access in that fund right now? Well, just a question. Does this mean that they aren't successful in getting grants to su support this research? I mean, aren't they, they eligible to have grants just like we are? They and do have grants, but they still need the matching fund mm. funds. Uh, and this is what they're asking for. They're, is they're asking for the matching part. Correct. 
Do we have excess in our research line item? Mm -mm. For 2018, I'd have to take a look. I don't know if we do. No, we don't no. presently. So that's why it would either come forward out of the 2019 effectively or out of the reserve funds. So the reserve. Mm -hmm. And the amount was how much, are you asking? $1,000. 